Okay. So, we'll start with the Nadia. Uh, can we just, I'm um, sorry, yeah. can I just say that is my dad's yacht site today? Hi, I'm Arukhim, and please just remind me, name, please keep waiting for your landers there today. Hang on, hang on, they're making a noise here again. Pesach Nachman Ben Svi Hirsch. Okay, and I think you said Pesach Nachman Ben Svi Hirsch, and I think you sent it to me last week, right? I did, yeah. Great, okay, so I will put it on for this week for learning as well, for Thank Shabbos you. learning. And you should just have an Aliyah Nashamas, and in his chus. Amen. Therefore, his grandchildren, great grandchildren, and all that followed by Ezra Sashem. Okay. Oh, that's oh, okay, amazing. And we've got to say for Tari here as well. Which just makes you a bit more careful, right? Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Amen. 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 <laughs> I just then here's a question. Oh, question. Oh, Manchetta, I I done. I knew there was something different about you. I just think, just and not just be how one's not that same with you, but say, okay. but is it all not just judgmental and superficial? And and then why did we, why did I then come from and put my children in? Because go back to the other world and see how good that is. <laughs> <laughs> that's what yeah, Rabbi Rachel said world. to me. That's not judgmental. <laughs> Okay, okay, okay. Do you, do you hear? Do you hear? Okay. Yes, yes. So, so I'm going to uh, listen, listen. I'm going to share with all of you because it's so important and this is exactly what we all need to get over. Hashem is here with Corona. Hashem is here with illness. Hashem is here with emotional challenges. Hashem is here with absolutely everything that he has put and brought into our world to help us to create and to make what we call a tikkun to help our neshamas become as close to Hashem as possible. Okay. Ultimately, in our world, all we want, or we should want, is the closeness of Hashem. Whatever Hashem gives us, we're supposed to use in order to make him into our world and remain close with Him. You know, I'm laughing to myself because of all the different things. Neva Nejad, who's a friend of mine, sent out this thing about her beautiful clothing thing, I posted on my status, you know, she definitely got a lot of it, my Tehila says to me what she's selling, because it just says the winter collection, okay, what she's selling, and I said, I think clothes, but I'm not really sure, <laughs> so I messaged her, you know, and I took Tehila to have a look in case there was something on the lower range, which obviously my daughter picked out the most expensive dress in the whole thing, even with the discount, we decided that's not worth it. So she said, but she does beautiful fake jewelry. So I said something to her about, oh, but what about your jewelry? She said, no, they're doing a, she's doing a sale next week in her house. So she sent me another thing, which I'm happy to post anybody that wants to buy. And I'm laughing to myself because actually, what do we need? We live in a world where all the things you need, we do need, but the needs and the needs. And all the things that we do, anything that brings us closer to Hashem is good to do. Anything that distracts us, should we should not be doing. Okay. Now, well, that's right. So, so we the book, never, no, no, no. We have to remind ourselves. We have to remind ourselves that every person started and comes into the world when they came in, where they came in, where Hashem put them, whose body they chose when they were in Shemaim, and. Much and all the different things that we, we have. Now, it doesn't make sense to us when we don't have clarity that I chose this for me, okay? There are lots of things. Each of us will be able to find some things, um, and he's, where's your mother in law coming? Some things. <laughs> no, your husband told me. Oh, dear. You control me. Uh, well, that's why I want to know when she's coming. So everything that we do, okay, has to do connected to that. Oh my gosh, that tree is amazing, just by the way. I've never looked at it from mm -hmm. here properly in that line, and it's amazing. And all I can see in that tree are actually the roots. I can't see anything else excepting the roots of that tree, okay? Why? Because without the roots, the tree can't stand. Do we see the roots? Can you see the roots? I can't see them. 
I can only imagine them and say that they are where they are. And I probably can't even because I've only got such a limited imagination. Maybe Deborah, oh, you should see my flowers. I am so proud of myself. <laughs> and I've got tomatoes growing green inside, fingers. inside. Very it's still a little in green. They're not going to make the biggest salad, but hey. <laughs> but it helps us to see Hashem's miracles. Okay. It really does. Like, it's amazing. I actually feel bad that I've got that silly grass, but I say, hey, at least I've got other stuff that's there that's real. The grass isn't Hashem's creation. It's a pigment of our imagination that makes us think that that's fresh grass. Okay. Our whole life that we live, we've got no clue what is really good for us. Okay. We don't know what's really good for us. We have an idea. If I had to say to you, is it better for you and your neshama to be keeping shakas, to be keeping kosher, to be keeping mikvah, to covering your hair? Is it better for you and your neshama than to be out somewhere? You know, somebody called me this morning and I, I'm still like, I'm actually like, she asked, what's her question? Yeah, she works in a fancy company. She's one of the directors. They're doing an Xmas video for advertising. It's clothing, it's less clothing, whatever it is. Okay, so she's one of the five directors. And they're doing, uh, they've all got to say a line, sing a song, whatever it is. And everybody in the company is saying something. So she was supposed to say something about something about the holidays, but use the word Christmas. She says, I can't say that word. She can't say that word. Okay. So can she use the word holiday? And they said, fine, because it fits it in and really big deal, right? But then what happened? One of the girls came in and she said, let's take a selfie. Oh, I think that must have been part of the line. So she was taking a selfie of herself for this show, obviously, for this little video clip. And a girl jumped in. And then one of the male directors also came in, but he put his arm on her waist. Now, she, they took the video, they took the picture. She thought you couldn't read, like it looked like he was there, but you couldn't really see. Anyway, she kind of, made a bit of a thing, like, oh, yeah, the, the, oh, it's great. And she was like, oh, okay. And she left. But then she got home and she's thinking, it's going to be a picture of me with a selfie with a man who's not my husband, who's not even Jewish, who's got his arm in my waist. Is that okay? So she left me a message last night. Can I just ask you something not urgent? No, I know whenever she sends me a message like that, it's usually whatever, something that I don't care if it's urgent or not urgent. It's urgent. Okay. So I messaged her this morning and said, can, sorry, I couldn't get back to you last night. Can you speak now? So she tells me this whole thing. She's, I said, actually, try and get it off. Tell them, you know, I'm actually, you know, I'm Jewish. You know, I'm trying, like, I'm, I'm like observant. And um, and really, it's just inappropriate. Yeah. Oh my gosh, never! I would never say that. Man, actually, men in our current climate. In our, know. it doesn't. No, there's men no such a know. thing as climate and climate. When you're in a company and yes. you is a business, I have another yeah. friend who also. Yeah. No. Yes, yeah. yes, you didn't have permission. Otherwise, you know why it got abused because exactly. But but the fact it's is, is that you're in a company. Just keep it up. So it's right. Yeah. Oh, you know what? Our world has gone so mad. So, so this is what I'm saying. Surely okay. So surely he has to ask permission. I don't know. You work in the same company. These things are normal. So what I said to her, why won't you say that? She said, are you mad? I'll be going around the company. Do you know what she said? Do you know what she said? Do you know what she said? I said, actually, it's a very good lesson. And I wish somebody in every company would walk around and say, it's not your wife. Do not talk to her next to the coffee machine. That is not your husband. You don't sit with him in an office when there's nobody else there. Actually, she could say, I don't, I feel uncomfortable. Just I just said to her, I just said to I just, I just said to no, I just said she's great. She's just going to say, I don't, I don't like the picture. Mm -hmm. Fine. I don't like the picture. You don't have to say what it is. Can you change the picture? Can I just do another one? I didn't like the way I looked or something like that. We get but she doesn't want to because he's, you know, he's the big man in the company. And this is where we are. Is there Emmett in that, Suzanne? No. Okay. 
We're living in a world that is so clouded that everything goes. My mother was telling me today, you know, in her protest, somebody's offered to speak. They have an English speaker every week. It happens to be that the man who's going to speak in two weeks' time is gay. And he is actually going to, his title is Growing Up Gay in a Jewish World. When he was growing up. Like today, it's a little bit different. Today, you know, we're living in a mad world. And I'm thinking to myself, I'm not going to say to my mother, honestly, mom, couldn't you? Like, no, because people want to share experiences. Okay. But what's the truth of every experience? Is only what we feel and what we think we have. Okay. Now, when we go to places that we feel are judgmental, Every institution in the world has to say, this is what I've created my institution for. Okay? Everyone. We're allowed to say that. You know, if I had to say to every school, they have an ethos, you know, what they do. You have to just be um, transparent about everything. Yeah, I don't have an issue with what you're saying, but it's, it's the question. We're getting to that. that We're getting to that. Right? And, and Especially if you're coming from, I expect a higher standard. So don't expect. Okay, them. okay. So let's go like this. Suzanne expects a higher standard of the society and the world that we live in because of where she from comes world. from, of the from world. Okay, we have to remind ourselves that expectations equal disappointment in everything that we do, and your expectation needs to be of the Torah not of the from people okay yeah. we yeah. want what we want i've said this many times yeah. but it's hard to remind ourselves because it's very challenging okay people are people you know honestly and truly i sometimes look at some people and i think to myself you know you forgot you forget where you come from you forget where you come from look at every day we should actually sit down and say look what hashem's done for me aren't we supposed to do that Imagine if we really sat down in time of contemplation. The truth is that if we did all the things that we had to do, there's no time for frivolity. There's no time for, for, for nonsense. There's no time for doing things that aren't focused on where we are. But when we do have time, all we have to say to ourselves every single day and at every moment is, Hashem, this is for you. I'm working on myself for you. I'm running to bring cross today because I'm doing something to make it easier for one of my children. I went to Brain Cross the other day, three times in a week. That's outrageous. Okay. I mean, like, are you, have you lost it? Well, yeah. uh, for one of my children, I suddenly decided to check her John Lewis um, gift card that's sitting in my cupboard. And I saw that the time had expired, but it's only two weeks ago. So I took a picture, I sent an email and I made a phone call and it's reinstated for the next three weeks right what a nice mother and i have to remind myself i'm doing it just to be kind it's a chesed i'm doing it as a chesed for my own child okay why should i you know i went to do something also I, I, and, and i had to spend vouchers of one of my children just to get something so that i could also i'll return it in three weeks and then get another voucher for a month because she's known as coming in december okay i'm a very nice mother i went search because i need boots there's not a pair of boots to buy in town i promise you i can't find a pair of boots okay you're gonna find me boots do what she does but yeah. well, i bought one pair and i brought it home and they're really not comfortable i can't buy a pair of boots my last pair of boots that i bought were just so comfortable i put them on and it was just like and and now when i think about it, i was like fainting what i paid then and they're cheap they were so we, we've got to understand so yeah. Said to me yesterday on the way yeah. home from, from Giles. she said to me you know when you go on holiday and you wake up really early in the morning and you're not tired and you're just really excited and you just can't wait for the day to happen she said all i want is to wake up every morning like that to be really excited about learning and to be able to do chesed and to do my Torah learning she goes I just want to live my life like that and feel excited about that every morning okay and so you I know what thought, like, if, if, like, the best that you can say it what you need to have done what you need to have done is to have recorded her you need to have recorded her because we have to play that to ourselves but we have to play that to ourselves every day
And you know what? Life is no, going to be real. <laughs> right now, do you know what? Seriously, seriously, right now, and every single one of us should wake up in the morning when we say Modani, you should feel exactly that way. Yeah, I want to just become close. closer to our shame. Do you know what? Everybody's life challenges, but we've got to be able to do that within our life, in our gifts that we're given in order to better ourselves. It is a challenge. You know, when we come, Hashem, we say thank you. You've given me this, let me overcome it. You've given me this, let me do that. You know, I'm lateral flowing every, like, I'm like, I'm laughing at myself, like, you know, like, really? Well, it's not me. I'm not worried about me, but I'm worried about people around me. Okay. Then everybody tells you, okay, after five days, you're not infectious. Okay. But they still keep you for another five days. Now, if you want to order lateral flow tests, they didn't, they ran out of them at my pharmacy and then I found, very proud of myself. I went, she sent me to the drawer where I had put those, whatever you call them, what do you call them? The test tube things. And I'd been saying, our box didn't come with them. <laughs> well, they did. But when I opened it, I must have put them in the top drawer. <laughs> well, I've now ordered them online, but I didn't know. But I went to the pharmacy to get, and the guy's like, you need a number from 119. They're very smart. Why are you ordering it online? Why are you getting a number for 119? They're checking who's doing lateral flows. They did it for me in the chemist. You get a code while you're in there. That's, oh, did he? Oh, my goodness. Oh, okay. Well, I've got seven around in now. They should be at they school. They get at school. <clears throat> We've used all the schools. And then you sit with people who say, oh, I can't be bothered. And I've got, a, I've got a fake thing. I haven't had been vaccinated, but I've got my NHS thing that says I've been vaccinated. And then somebody says, I'm so happy I just had corona. At least I'm like immune for six months and now I can feel okay using my, my, my letter that says I'm vaccinated. Where's that from? I say. I was in Kosher Kingdom a long, I was in Kingdom, I was in Kosher Kingdom months ago and somebody was going, she says, oh, her sister's just gone to Israel. I said, wow, how did she get a visa? She said, oh, I can get you one too. I'm like, no I thanks. That, yeah. No thanks. I said, we don't do that. I just looked at her and I said, oh no, I could never do that. <laughs> right? And I wanted her to get that message, but I don't think it goes in. Those people, Suzanne, are the people that you get upset with. We can't get upset with anybody for decisions that they make because when they're going to stand, yeah, my friend told me right at the beginning of, of Corona, it was Rosh Hashanah, the first Rosh Hashanah. And my friend in my neighbor told me her husband doesn't let her go anywhere near certain places. He doesn't let her, he's a doctor, he's a physician. Um, he's an eye specialist. He had cancer. She um, is vulnerable. And he says, you're not going anywhere. She said, but, he says, no, because it's not about us. It's like when you teach somebody to drive, don't worry about how you, well, worry about how you're driving, but you've got to be careful about people everywhere. Right? Even coming here, this stupid big truck is trying to go, where does he think he is? You know, like, don't be stupid. But if you're not aware of everything around you, and we have to be aware of our surroundings, and that's in our Torah life as well. So she told me this terrible story. There were two older men that set up their own bench with a big space at the back of the shop. That they could have their space and still go to shop. And the week after Rosh Hashanah won, unfortunately, got corona and died. And a week, a few days after, the other man also. Because there had been a young man who had come and sit in between them who probably hadn't been whatever. Now, we, in our, and she said to me, it's the most terrible thing. She said, thank God I don't know who that person was, but people do. And her husband was so upset. And I said, you know what? I know that. And I felt like I kept thinking to myself, it's so. And I thought, you know, Hashem has his plan for everybody. Hashem has his life plan for this one and for this one and that one. Okay? And where we are, we can't see the big picture. Now, 
The person who sat in between, yeah, he's going to be punished for his part of it, but that's part of his tikkun. Maybe he didn't have free will when he did that. But what we are put here, right? Like Rabbits and Regla says, what do we do? What are we supposed to be doing? You know what we're supposed to be doing? We're supposed to use the things that he's sending us as our challenges and say, this is my tikkun that I'm doing. I know Hashem wants this tikkun from me. This is tough stuff. This is tough stuff. We can only do what I can do. Somebody's annoying me in my house. Well, you know what? It's very nice. Thank God I haven't got my phone. I'm sure Zebby's sending me a thing. Mom, my breakfast, cereal, I'm hungry. You know, can you believe I made him in the middle of the day yesterday? No, Bangers and mash. Oh, my husband was very happy, but he can't taste anything. I said, I'm not quite sure. Well, you're eating so much, like well, you won't taste anything. Well. well, you want to know who's that for? I said, the visitors. Oh, oh, my husband also, yeah. Yeah, Yannington also. He's only out on Sunday. And I said, like, it's all very nice and well to have, like, you know, nice, quiet showers. But there's quiet and there's quiet. Did he have a booster? Yeah. But he, well, he wasn't two weeks after his booster. I'm not two weeks after my booster. Okay, he wasn't two weeks after. So, you, the booster is really effective. so you know, but you know what? I believe that the booster in Yannington is vulnerable. He said... Like, really, I mean, I keep wanting to say to him, just say Baruch Hashem, like, you don't want to be ill. You know? He's lost, he can't smell and taste. Well, you know what? Couldn't tell if I'd made curry or not. So you can the colour. <laughs> <laughs> so you can see the colour's not yellow. I understand uh, everything you're saying, and what um, Lydia said, and out, and, but that isn't, how can someone be judged for a shida? Depending on what they go to, they've been at Suzanne, Suzanne, you don't have to worry about those people. You don't have to worry about those people. You don't. I told Maya, I told Maya before Suzanne came in, I told Maya, I told Maya, you know what? L listen, I want to tell you something. I'm waiting today for, well, I haven't got my phone, but I'm waiting today for somebody who's getting, please God, getting engaged today. Okay. Now, it's a very close friend of mine's daughter, and I think that they are, but whatever. She has, it's recorded, three dates. They know they're ready to get engaged. Okay. Now, you know, it's a funny thing, but everybody's going to have their different challenges in life, whether they live together for two years or whether they date three times. Everybody has their thing. It doesn't make a difference. Okay. It's how we react and behave within the situation. As long as, as Robertson Regler says, there's no abuse. Abuse out. Okay, that's that's that. Those are the things. And then even that is that a tick on here? But take your stupid tick on and get out. Move. Hashem doesn't expect you to to be in a place and remain there when you know that it's good, not good for you. Okay, but the rest of it, it's how we deal with it. You know, Friday night. I know, Zevi really, he came, he says, I just need to make Kiddush and go to sleep. Made Kiddush, I might see at his two brown, and one brown roll instead of like four, you know, he boxes like brown color down. And then he benched and went up. Six, quarter to ten to six. He was out, okay? Well, by half past six, my husband went upstairs too. And my cleaner was arrived only at about half past six, which was wonderful. So there I was, reading, relaxing, quiet, did my Tehillim, I did my Gary Saramban, you know, it was like heaven. And then I'm thinking, actually, it would be nice to have a little bit of company. <laughs> okay, Shabbos, oh my gosh, hello, anybody here? <laughs> you know, like, okay. Where, and then I remembered I hadn't done a lateral flight, otherwise I was going to go up to Ruham, I said to come for a walk. But I thought, I'm not going to, if I didn't do my lateral flow before. Huh? Are you allowed to do the mission? No. I no, 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 you can't. You've got to break. Unless it's an emergency. If it's life safe threatening, you can. But like if you had to go into a hospital and was life threatening, of course you yeah. can. But I didn't really have to. So. But I have to tell you, you know, we also sometimes project things. So was it a beautiful Shabbos? Absolutely. Could I have fetched a moment and complained? Absolutely. Doing all the different things. I learn things on Shabbos Day that I don't usually get a chance to actually sit and learn. 
So it enhances our shadows, but it's a choice of how we decide to make it like that. I could have sat there crutching, really? Do I have to have this and no company and this and that? Well, you know what? Actually, you can really make most of what Shabbos is supposed to be for that. And that's a gift that Hashem gives us. And I'm thinking, oh my gosh, I'm going to do that again this Shabbos. But Shabbos comes in at 10 plus 4 and is out by 5.30. Do we want that? No, we want Shabbos to be as long as we can. But how do we get to that place and stage of being like that? We've got to be also comfortable with ourselves. When we're comfortable with ourselves, we don't have to worry about the outside world. And I can tell you something for sure. Even this shidduch in three days, this girl did not want to marry a boy who came from any kind of background like this boy comes from. At all. She wanted what she thought she could have in her headspace as normal. And it's different, not what she planned. So we all have to remind ourselves, Hashem sends the Shittuchim. He helps us to see things that we shouldn't see. And he helps us to blind us from things that we should see. And I mean that, what I've just said. I know it sounds backwards, but that's what it is. There was an Altuski when I took Danielle to, when she was, before she was getting married, and I was in Israel, and we went to Rebus and Altuski after Shabbos candle lighting. And she was so gorgeous. And then before we leaving, she says to her like this, before a person gets married, before they get engaged, they must have both eyes open and both ears open. The ones they married, <laughs> no hearing, no listening, no seeing. Just, just don't look at things, <laughs> right? And what do we do? We start ticking, ticking. You do this. Why'd you do that? Why'd you do this? Why'd you do that? Yeah. As soon as something good started, oh, you didn't thank me for taking out the bin. Well, do you know how many times I had to ask you to take out the bin? <laughs> Where does it come from? Where did those little things come from, right? All those challenges, the real things, you know? I laughed to myself yesterday and I'm thinking, you know, what is it? Like, seriously, I actually caught up with half the amount, less than half the amount of stuff that I had to just get done, okay? Work stuff. Then there's breakfast, then there's lunch, then there's make this, then there's shop for that, then there's buy that, then there's put the one wash in and then there's put the dry in, then there's fold the dry and then there's, Take Zevi needed his, all his bedding washed, which he really did. So I took everything one at a time. And I've got these great duvet things that has the cover on it. And you put it in the washing machine, in the dryer, and it's done. And it's back on the bed. And they're great. Naomi convinced me to buy this at Costco. And I'm so happy that I did. Because actually for, for, for that, it's just brilliant. And it's just a nice blue color. And it's, it's great. Okay. It's, a, it's like a duvet. But literally, it's like a, uh, it's like a sheet. Just like all in one. It's actually used for visitors when you have. So instead of having a duvet and a cover, like having an extra duvet, it's like it's like a, it's supposed to be like a visitor thing. But my friend Thomas, her son loves it and he uses it. I was taught, she phoned me that this was another funny thing. Now she phones me while I'm in Costco. And she said, and I said, oh, I'm just returning. I, I was telling that I was just returning these things. She said, don't be crazy, don't return them. You can't get them. But, and they, so I went back to the customer service where I just returned them. I asked if I can buy them back. I said, yeah, I just spoke to my friend. He said, they're really good. So she was just laughing. <laughs> and it was actually a great thing. Did I even need it? No. But yesterday, I'm like very happy with myself. I, and I said to Naomi, what did I buy it for? It's like, not like I don't ever do that. And then I phoned her yesterday to say, thank you for telling me to do it. Okay. And then you count all the things. And then you've got this. And then you've got that. And then I was teaching. And then I, I, I don't even know. The person that I'm learning with is a father. There's no mom. And I'm learning with the daughter. So I thought, you know what? At Mitzvah programs, we have pizza. I'm sending them pizza. But then I've got to do delivery. I did think of buying it and dropping it there. But the traffic yesterday, everyone was telling me, was terrible. Yeah. So I said, delivery. So I had to phone Anita to ask her. <laughs> I'm like laughing. And I'm thinking, like, and you're so stupid. Like, why couldn't you do this yourself? And I said, well, at least there are people that are happy to help you do it. So do it. 
Do you know what I'm saying? So all the different things and we finished and we can finish our day and it's okay. And when you go through your day and you think about Hashem orchestrated that and he orchestrated that and he sent this and he did this and he gives you things that you think, I'm just never going to ever be able to cope with and deal with and have this in my life. Like, why did you send that to me? And at that moment, at that moment, you've got to say, Hashem, this is probably like a tikkun. I don't know what I need this tikkun for, but this is the tikkun that I need. So I'm doing this and I'm going to overcome that feeling as my tikkun. That's what I'm going to, that's my work. My tikkun and where I come from and all the things and all the different nishamas that I'm carrying in my, in me, we don't know that that one reaction, okay, Hashem, so you've got people that are judgmental. If we don't have a bank account, it's not your zivug, darling. And if they meet by themselves without knowing, do you know how many people I know that have met themselves and the parents would never have gone for that shiver, ever. Tough. Right? Many, many years ago, I was learning with a girl who met like that, who shouldn't have. And his family would never, ever have taken this girl. Never. And the family. But that was it. It was a done deal. And he wasn't moved, and he wasn't, he wasn't to the extent that this girl was getting her wedding dress made at a certain dressmaker. And the mother in law, his mom, went to get the same dressmaker, loved the material, and got it in two shades darker. And the dressmaker phoned to say, Oh, do you know what your mother in law just ordered? And she went ballistic. It's a dress. You know who's going to feel like the idiot in 10 years' time? Was it the wedding dress? It was her mom's style dress, which was a long dress, that was in the same lace material that was stunning as the colour, as the brand. The mother-in-law got the same dress, two shades darker. So cream. <laughs> now, I said to her, firstly, darling, she's going to look at the wedding pictures and think, what was I thinking? I look like such an idiot. This girl, so beautiful and stunning, got the perfect figure. I'm like, okay, but really, what was I thinking? Like, what were you thinking? Were you thinking? I said, let her go. So she let her go. And I knew she hadn't. And then one day she comes to me. What a week later. Like I've been every single day. It's like driving me mad and I can't sleep from it. And it's annoying me and irritating me. I said, good, spit it out, yeah? Tell me how stupid your mother-in-law is. Say all the horrible things that you want and then say, done. Done. Well, nobody asked the mother-in-law to change or say this isn't so I nice. told her don't. Don't. Let her do it herself. So you know what? When the dress, when she went back to the dressmaker, the dressmaker told the mother-in-law, it's not really going to suit you. It's not going to be flattering. Like this material and while she's sitting with me the dressmaker phoned and said I changed your mother-in-law's mind a non-Jewish dressmaker who thought this was stupid because she saw how upset the girl the girl I said how did you behave when you went there to, next to the dressmaker I said don't tell me but tell me that you just probably cried and I said it's only a stupid dress I said, yes, I was like, oh, God. Suzanne, it's stupid, sorry. I, I, I'm telling you, I don't it's stupid. Think it just, it symbolizes so, but you know what? Okay. And today, they, and today they're good friends. Well, yeah, hey, 17 say, years later, 17 forward. years later, you know what? Because she realized right then that she was going to let this go. There were lots of things that happened. The wedding, the Sheva Brachas, the after, the weather, everything. But you know what? She became a better person. And she learned, and she's, she's not perfect, but they get on fine. And things annoy, like anything annoys us. Anything. Okay. We have to be able to say when we can say, you know, now the truth is that now I hardly speak to my mother-in-law because she doesn't know who I am. And she's sweet and she sits on the other side and she'll smile. And I think to myself, and you know what? 
there was, I used to literally, for years and years, I used to phone her, and when my father-in-law was ill, which is years ago, but every single morning I called her. Every single morning. Every single morning. And you know how I knew that my father-in-law had passed away early in the morning? Because I made my morning call. I made my morning call. We wouldn't have known. My husband would not have got into the Levaya. I made the morning call. <clears throat> and the night before, I said, Jonathan, you're too late to go and visit. I could hear him on the phone. I said, you're too late. You're too late. But I made my normal morning call. So early in the morning, before Jonathan even came back from shul, I booked his ticket. I couldn't, wouldn't go and interrupt his davening because otherwise he couldn't daven. And luckily, he wouldn't be allowed to daven. So I waited for him to come back from shul, and I could tell him that I booked his ticket for the Leviathan. Okay? But, and you know, for years after, and I used to call, I called. I don't think my mother-in-law ever called me. I don't think my mother-in-law gave me presents ever. I never left and never went there without giving her and giving and doing. I know that. Right? So we have to understand what's the big deal. There's no big deal in it unless we make it a big deal. And we leave it. And what's the thing? But it's an amazing and amazing thing because we have to understand that when we grow in the world and when we see who we are and what we're doing and how we're doing, we're looking only at me, myself, and I. That's it. That's all we have to be concerned about. Am I going to be judgmental when a shirach comes up for my child? I promise you, you're going to look into the family, where they're from, who they this. Can he look after my daughter? Is he earning enough money? Why Has he got enough? Family? Why don't you just look at the person? Well, you look at the person, but you know what? I want to. I want you to know that you do want to know what kind of a house they come from. A person who comes because you know why? I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. For a very simple thing. No, of course it doesn't. But it's still good to know what's going on. Okay. A person who comes. I'm going to tell you. I'm going to give you. I'm going to give you an example, and nothing. It can be wrong. Of course it can be. Yesterday I had a conversation with a mom, and it's actually very funny because. It's taken her a long time until she's actually called. And I phoned to tell her, I know both boys that you have been suggested for your daughter, call me. And Jenny called me yesterday. It took two weeks. I was like, anyway, because I know well enough, I was like, really? You could have phoned me two weeks ago, you know? <laughs> oh, I feel so bad. I said, yeah, okay, well, you know, both boys are waiting. I still don't see why. Listen, so I'm going to give you an example. Okay. I'm going to give you an example. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying that we can't change it because this is mm -hmm. an example. An, an example I know. Okay. A girl grows up in a home. Now, this is the funny part. Why it's not funny, but it's, it's a shame sense of humor. So the guy that she's dating. He's got a great sense of humor. He really does. <laughs> <laughs> I think we could probably say we could. <laughs> okay. The girl grows up in a home. Absolutely no shalom vice. Okay. But they marry the parents. The boy stipulates that something that's very important to him is that he marries somebody who's not from divorced parents. Okay. That's his thing. Anybody can have. You know, some boys marry thin girls, some boys won't marry their three, three pounds of a weed, some want to marry somebody who's a little bit chubby. You know, there are those ones. There too. are no boys. There are, that. I no, promise no, you. No, no, no. I do not believe. What about you said Muhammad's teacher got married? One of them. Okay. So I'm not saying they don't, but I'm saying I don't believe any boy actually. Okay, but I do. So listen, this is so interesting. So he says like this. She says, so far. I know what the family situation's like. He never asked. He also never asked if it's a happy home. Okay. They get married. One year later, her parents, his, her parents get divorced. I mean, he finds out very quickly that even if they lived in the same house, they should have been divorced probably 10 years before. Okay. How does he find out? Because they get married. No, they get married. And they move into their little flat. 
and it is in perfect order, exactly the way her mother's house was always perfect order, perfect school teacher, perfect put away, perfect not this, but no love and no warmth and no kindness. And she phones me up after being married for about three weeks and she says, I've turned into my mother. I said, what do you mean? I know what she means, but now you should know. I spoke to Dan Lopian and I was telling him about this because he knew the parents and he was there in a sudden condition. And Dan Lopian says to me when I told him that the person who married them, the, the rabbi married them. So Dan Lopian says to me, this was very funny as well. He says to me, ah, she's a cult of fish, the mother, a cold fish. Okay, there's no warmth. That's how she grew up. Okay, her mom. Now the daughter is turned into her mom. And her husband comes home. And he's got a nice, tidy house and perfect meal and perfect this and da 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 da. But she's, and she says, I don't know what to do about it. I said, Well, I'm going to send you for therapy. I can't afford it. I said, Fine, I'll fundraise for it. And introduced her to the most wonderful Reverson. But she started then. They're still married. They're marrying off their children. Okay. And they're happily married. She is very different. And she's not, she's never been, she's not a social person. She's socially, and it's funny because like socially, she's not so comfortable with all people. Yeah? And when her one daughter got married, got in, was dating somebody, she says to me, he's socially awkward. I said, that's funny that you noticed that. You're also sometimes socially awkward. Well, everybody's sometimes socially awkward, she says. I said, yes. Yes. So you're not going to marry somebody because they're socially awkward. And then the girl says to me, well, he reminds me a little bit of my brother. And I know she thinks he's socially awkward. But it's a comfort zone. Because she's comfortable with him. So she could marry him. So then we start our marriages learning how to be married, if we do. And if we don't, then we just make the same mistakes forever. And that's what happens. So when somebody comes from a home where they see how people are and what they, it's just naturally, it doesn't mean they can't do it better. It doesn't mean they can't change. It doesn't mean they can't grow. It doesn't mean that we can't learn how to do things, right? And that's what's important. That's what we have to see. And that's what we're looking for. So we're looking for a place of growth. We're looking for a place to become accepting of everybody. And those people that have their things about the heart, you should hear the Iraqis. I mean, they're the best. <laughs> the Iraqis. Um. <laughs> yeah, not like us. We just thought, oh, I can't get him. You know, you know, I, I had, I, I I went, I went, no, I had, I had, I had, I had, I had, I had, I had an Iraqi, I had an Iraqi father once. I never knew that there was a hierarchy in Sfardi because it was Ashkenazim and Sfardi. And I learned that there was a hierarchy in the Sfardi world too. And we don't marry Iranians. The yeah. father would rather take an Ashkenazi girl than an Iranian. I'll speak it's changing now, though. Everything's changed. Why? Because everybody's intermarried. Mashedi. If you came from Mashed, you didn't marry somebody from out of there. It was not yeah, it's heard also, of. It's like that his yeshiva would be what, Iranians, Iraqis. Yeah, what, yeah, the Iraqis. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because, because snobby about they're that. snobby. Right? But you know what it is? It's marrying your comfort zone. It's not a snobism. Somebody wants to marry somebody who's got no money. Can you imagine? In days gone by when the boys wanted to sit and learn, it had to come from a girl's family who could afford to keep it. It makes sense. There's some people like Rabbi Akiva who could live with his wife, Rachel, on nothing. But look what she did. Did she give us? She gave up her money and her wealth because she wanted to marry Torah. How could it be that her father misjudged that? How? But look what we have. Look what we have from Rabbi Akiva. It's like not normal. Right? So the whole world's judgmental. 
And when Hashem sends us the right things, that's when we've got to say, this is our Torah. This is our Torah. It's still right for us to try. Because we it's don't right to, for to us not to try, try that and not to try and make course, our children. Of course. If we're not aware of it. And of course. Not to... Of course. Do you know what? <coughs> There's certain worlds. I spoke to her mom once, and I tell you, her daughter actually married this type of book. I have one kid. And she was, the way she spoke about her daughter, I felt bad for any husband that's going to marry him. Because the mother's going to be checking in some way or another that you're looking after my daughter like a princess, because she is one. And maybe she behaves like a princess in her home, and therefore her husband treats her like that. I don't know, right? But I can tell you it's tough for those girls when somebody does make a tiny little mistake. Look, I suppose everybody's judgmental. It's what's important to you. I know when I got married, what was important to me, I wanted someone who had been to university, someone who was an intellectual. If you would have offered me a poor person like that, but a millionaire who wasn't, didn't speak well and who couldn't think, I, 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 it wouldn't have even been a choice for me. Yeah. So everyone has their... Everybody has their thing. Their and that's things. what we have to know, right? When girls are feeling that they're going to be judged by the same, that, that's not good for them. It's unhealthy mm -hmm. for them. It's like, I've got to go to the same because of... But if they say, I want to go to this kind of same because this is the kind of boy I want to marry. And if I grow into that, I can marry that kind of a boy, which actually is okay. Yeah. It's okay. This is what I want to be, you know. These are the things that I want. So in, in the success of what we do, that's what we see. And the challenge becomes is, is you know, we don't know what the, where the other place comes from. That's the hard part. We don't know. We don't know. Because that's what we all want to be. And if every place was helping everybody to become the best that they can be, and then we just have this challenge of what Hashem has sent us, and he says, it's not going to be in everybody's um, DNA. And we don't know what's going to clip and change and all the things, but this is the world we live in. So we have this world of um, internet and all the things which are awesome, amazing, right? Who would have thought if anybody would have said to us three years ago, well, no, two and a half years ago, two years ago, two years ago now, November before Corona, that actually, you know, not everybody's going to want to come and be in space. So we'll be able to have a share <laughs> in, Sorry. that's okay, you're okay. No, in room and Zoom. Not you're trying not to talk. You're allowed to cough. <laughs> we, even when you, say, when you say the word corona, then you're not allowed to cough. So it's fine. Okay. But who would have said that we could still participate and still grow and still do things together in room and Zoom? You know, it, you, you would have said, nah. You know, there were, there were, I remember companies discussing things before Corona. People wanted days off so that they could work in the office. It doesn't work. Now they're coming as a day in. And people are saying it's working. And people are doing their work. Yeah, you're always going to have your whatevers that are going to do more shopping online or doing whatever they want than working. But that's, they're going to do that in their work as well. Those people messed around on their computers in their office. It's no difference. Right? Josh Denton was saying, he's like, he's in a new job. You haven't been and met people. Now he's been in twice on a Thursday. It's like, oh my gosh. Who are they people? For young people, that's something. For young people, it's very, very hard. You just need to be in that environment that helps you. But you know what? This is the world we're in. So we say, thank you, Hashem. Thank you, Hashem, for giving us this. Thank you, Hashem, for helping us to acknowledge and to see it and to know it. And those are what we have to say. We've got to say we, we're grateful for it, and it's tough. But human nature is human nature, and we have to take our responsibility for ourselves and for nobody else. And there we go. It was a, and it's Rosh Chodesh on Thursday night. Is it? Yes. I can't really believe it, but it is Rosh Chodesh on Thursday night, and it's Rosh Chodesh yeah. Kislev. Um, so buy donuts or, um, yeah, prepare yourself. Oh, should you buy? Rosh Chodesh, we should always do something special. Oh, okay. Rosh That's Chodesh, nice. you should always do a Rosh Chodesh treat. Okay, so Thursday, Friday, Thursday night, Friday, uh, supper Thursday night, 
you know, we used to have takeaway lunch for this. Do you remember when they were young and it was like such a big deal? Yeah. Now, yeah, because if we put, you know, what, in a room before, right, so we've become, yeah. and that's and that's yeah. part of the thing. And what we need to do is, and you know, there's some people, I promise you, that would love a home cooked meal. I, I know somebody she cooks only for Shabbos, and her kids used to make fun of the, you know, like what they were getting. But and thank God, when they could afford to, literally, they ate out once a week. Got takeouts, bought in this, bought in that, and Shabbos the mom cooked. That was it. You know, I, I, I don't even think I don't know. I'm really not convinced. Okay, ask you later. Okay, <laughs> you know, but all the different things we have to. You know, when we start, when we there's too much that happens all the time. We've got too much. Nothing special. We've got too much. It's... You know, I was walk honestly. I was walking. Mm -hmm. I, I really. I walked through Brent Cross, and I really. I went. John Lewis, I went Phoenix, I uh, went into Clark's, I went oh, didn't into... did you find boots? That's what I was going to say, I love their boots. Uh, because you know what, the only pair of boots that I liked were actually suede, the ones that fitted and fitted comfortably in a normal heel. And there's no combination of something that's just a nice, good, soft leather. These and are I've put away they're long ones. I know, so those are too long for me, but I don't really want suede because suede does yeah, suede. Yes. No, I don't want short, I want up to the knee. So you've got you're very limited. You've got like four pairs what to try. Nice and then I actually went to, so they didn't have sizes in Marks and Spencers, but there is one boot that's nice. And actually I went to pick something up for one of my other children at next. And um, they forgot that they'd actually ordered it to VS. Does anybody know what that means? I told you. I told you, yeah, Victoria's Secrets. Oh. So I've now got to go into Victoria's <laughs> Secrets this morning to go and pick up her shoes. And I'm like, <laughs> are your landers in this day? <laughs> Do you want me to pick anything up? <laughs> Want some there? <laughs> Send them a text, go get it yourself. <laughs> She's so funny. I said, how can you order it to there? <laughs> Oh, poor Josh Denton, he told me about that because he got it. Oh, it yeah, it was him, it was Josh Denton, and he's like, can't. <laughs> so, you know, all these different things that happen in our lives, and we've just got to be able to, and it's not easy, and even the people that are close to us and near us, you know, when we are okay with something and they feel that it's something different, they don't really, they want you to, but they don't really want you to because it's, it's hard to see that somebody else is just, Come with it. We, we, we get to that stage. I, I have to say, I'm now looking at January and I'm feeling like, I'm like, failed. And it's not a fail. Hashem doesn't want us to go now for a certain reason. I don't know what. So we'll look for a ladies trip in January. The reason I wasn't doing January is because our, our May and Leo are expecting at the, hopefully right at the beginning of January. So I'm laughing. What if it's she's two weeks late or whatever? December, January. It's really December, January. So I keep like, so you know. Because we've got um, half, we've, there's half term in Bat Mitzvah and Bar Mitzvah programs in the second week of February. Okay. So it's all like, like I've got to have one week at home. Definitely and I'm just here. Huh? Are they definitely going ahead? Well, no, that's exactly the thing. But you can really. Yeah. We, we're holding, we're going to hold. So February, the thing is that we are making an, a, a plan B because I thought we could do a group. So I'm speaking to J Roots say? to see if they can organise a group that you can take children. Huh? All the bar mitzvah girls only once vaccinated. That's the problem. And unless they've had coronavirus within six months, they're not exempt. So it's very complicated. So at the moment I'm looking at Morocco and Rome. Oh, wow. And I think Rome people won't come to, but Morocco I think they will. Mm. So I'm actually going to discuss it with J Roots because they know what they're doing and then I don't have to, but it will just cost me more because I've got to pay J Roots to run a program. With. So, you know, everything becomes, and you just say, Kashem, I don't know what you want me to do. Why are you keeping us out of Israel? This might be the only opportunity that some of these kids go to have a Jewish Israel. And you're not allowing us to do that. So I don't know. But he's not. Okay. I don't know if we'll be, you know, who knows? I just say if it does and it changes, maybe we can cancel one thing and transfer it to something. I don't know. But we'll have to wait and see because, you know, EasyJet wanted 11,000 pounds from me for bookings. Who says there's going to be a plane? L I will charter me a plane, but it's going to be double the price. Look now. 
LL and, and EasyJet tickets. Yeah, you were very good. Oh, did you find BA? Yeah. You know? So they're yeah, they all, to be going up, aren't they? All tickets are. So that's why I even feel I feel like just buying two tickets and then changing them. You know? But that's all this is all part of Ashang's plan. All part of did you go on your trip to No, oh, because no. the person no. And then we're supposed to go this Sunday. And then the two people that I was going with um, can't go. So I got to Hela now. I'm going to get to Hela and Rahama to have a look about the next Sunday. And once, once I book something, then I can... The tickets, flying tickets, were like £16. Wow. Yeah, why were you going to... I just wanted to go to Keristeri, where, where Reb Shaila of Keristeri is buried. And it's a very holy place to go and dive so, one day. Well, you can't really. <clears throat> Some people know they can fly those things, but they do all the driving. They go there for three hours and fly back. I thought if we're going, then we'll do a night, go in the morning, go early in the morning. It's a two and a half hour drive there from the airport. So you get picked up at the airport and you go to the cabin. You've got to keep yourself four hours at the cabin. Right. You've got to give three, four hours. There's, there's, there's hospitality, there's coffee, there's cakes, there's whatever that are there. And then you can drive back that night to Budapest. Stay in the hotels aren't expensive in Budapest. Stay in Budapest overnight. Do some touring in the morning. It's tons of, you know, unfortunately, many of us were murdered there. And um, I'd even take a tour guide there for a couple of hours. And then in the afternoon, you're back you're in the evening, the flights in the evening, like 6.30 or something, 7 o'clock. So it's a two-day and it's, um, yeah, I wanted to do it in one day. And some people do do it, but nobody really wanted to join me on that. And then there's someone that I know that's organized a program and she's desperate for me to go on the program, but I just can't go. Like, I don't want to also go to the cabaret with another 30 people, get off a bus and go with 30 people to the Rather, if I'm going to go there when I've never not been before, 12 is really the optimum when we went with, you know, wherever we went with that, with our trip in Uman. Um, it was like a nice amount of people to travel, you know. Mm. It didn't feel over, like it's, and I'd still go back to Mesa Bush for shots. Yeah, that's amazing. Mm. That's amazing. You know, so these are the things. So I always say, like, you put your thing in. If Hashem wants it to happen, it will happen. If he says, no, 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 you think that this, is, this isn't the time, and whatever, it's fine. We'll just go with that. Yeah. And you fight it, it just makes you frustrated. Yeah, we learn anything from this kind of just you can't. I have to I have to tell you, but Follow. if people learned. So there's a lot of things that I don't believe the lessons that we're supposed to have learned from it in terms of people and interconnect interpersonal connections and things that we've learned. I don't believe we've learned them. And I think that that's why Hashem is he would have stopped by now. So it feels to me that we are going to have to get down to the bottom of the pit and go from there, that's what it does feel like. Um, in the meantime, we hold on to the rope, and you know, when you see, what, what, what we have to focus on is everything that's good, that can be good, that can that we can do and be, and that's what I can't you see, I mean, prayer has been bad, but it's certainly not the worst thing that's happened to us. We're very blessed. So if we We're didn't very learn blessed. lessons from other bad things, well, Look, we haven't learned from the Holocaust Things because where we are. Well. Yeah. And you know what? I went to so, I mean, so, so I told you I went to see this Leopold stuff. Yeah. Right. Did you see it? The Tom Stoppard. Um, you say it's not it's finished. It's finished, yeah. They've gone to 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 um, North America. I actually need to find my friend until it's going Canada. So it was really fascinating. And I'm trying to, like, for me, like, I'm thinking, uh, Hashem what, just played. Play? It's a, a play. play. I went to a real play. I went to theatre. I went to theatre. What do okay. you think? Very First good. time I've been to theatre, <laughs> and I don't know. And I went to a Holocaust theatre. <laughs> so Tom Stoppard, who happens to be Jewish. I didn't know he was Jewish. I have to tell you, I still am shocked. Okay? I'm still shocked. He's obviously... He, so, he's Jewish. The story is supposed to be about him and his family and everything. At 80, whatever he wrote, when did he write the play? I don't know. But he was married to Miriam Stockhold. Do you know Miriam Stockhold? She wrote all those child mm -hmm. thing books. I was shocked. And she's Jewish. Oh, wow. I think his first two wives were Jewish, but the 
I'm not sure one of them's not. But I think he's writing this as Chiva. But the whole thing starts in 1899 with the assimilation of the wealthy in Vienna with the Christmas tree because the son has married the Shiksa and he has converted, been baptized, oh, wow. and his wife has an affair with many going. <laughs> Just, you know, you, you, you can't even. Right? Yeah. And they have the Seder table. And, and, and the Shabbos and Kiddush. But they're so assimilated. And they want to be part of society. And it only happened to the rich. But this was in, the, in 1899. It's that book that we read, that, you know, that one that we love that, that people hate. Oh, the, Which, oh, the Rav the 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 Miller. Yeah. 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 No, it's amazing. It's true. It's all real. It's you know, what do you think Hashem saying to us? It's real. And you know what he's still, what's the, what's the whole, what's this play? You're a Jew and a Jew and a Jew. And whether you think you're baptized, you're a Jew. And they're going to take you away and the Nazis will murder you and they will send you and they're not interested. And even if you stay in Vienna and now you stay in Poland, can you imagine in Poland, you go into Poland today, you go to Auschwitz and you walk through a place where they steam shower you. Is that normal? Because they don't like COVID. Or maybe it's a reality action. I don't know. Okay? But they do it. And we accept it. We're not living in anything that's normal. We are, assimilation well, hasn't stopped. Yeah, they're doing it now. Ask uh, Rebecca. They can't take kids on the home. They did, they that. did, they did, they did. And in fact, there was a, a group from um, Manchester that went last week. That's why Zach Jeffrey um, messaged me last night. His mother wanted machala recipe. It's hysterical. You know what he said? He said, I don't know why my mom's making challah on a Tuesday, but hey, maybe it's for the, um, the Shabbat UK Wednesday. <laughs> you know? We're doing it all now. Cut that out of the recording. We're doing this all now. What are we doing? We support everything. Israel. Israel want to get rid of kashras. Israel want to get rid of Jewish marriages. Israel want to get rid of the Haredim. Israel want to, like, they want a proper society. They don't need these Haredi leeches. They're the only thing that keep the country going is the Torah and the learning. And until we all know that and recognize that, so where are we? So while we don't, and while we in the world, who's learned? Who's learned after the Holocaust in the 50s? They were said stealing, they were stealing babies from Moroccan and Taimani mothers and selling them to Americans. What did we learn? You know, this is, this is. Isn't that scary? Yeah. That could yeah. Happen yeah. From that. Yeah. I'm yeah. This can't... is scary. It's scary. And that's why we have to. Hashem, this is just for you. Whatever it is that we do, is for you. whatever. You know? I just thought that book was so logical. It is logical, yeah. but we don't like to accept it because we don't like to take you responsibility. Can't deny you, read it. you think you it's can't. Gonna be outrageous yeah. and you read it and you think, yeah. Actually, just... and we are, and we look around, and you know what? We look into wherever we're going. When, you know, a gorgeous little girl came to see me the other day. Gorgeous, gorgeous. She's got body dysmorphia because but she's petite and pretty and, and she did a self-test online she got all these teenagers filling in all these things online see a doctor see her this your score should be 50 but your score 65 what are we doing to ourselves you know this is what it is and we are stuck so we have to unstick ourselves. And that's all that we are responsible for. And we can say, we have this, we see that, we do this, we know that, we are, I, my, me, myself, and I, I'm doing the best that I can do. That's what I'm going to do. Remind myself, whatever I'm doing. This is my child. This is what I have to deal with. Hashem, this is what you send, and I'm doing the best that I can. That's it. You know?
I have to love them. I've got to give. I've got to do. I've got to be accepting. I've got to see that everybody is different. I've got to see every nashama is different. Yeah, you have all the different children and all the different things, and you have families that aren't blessed, and then you have families that are blessed, and then have the challenge. It's, it's just everywhere. There's nothing, there in, and there's not one person or anywhere, anything, anything in the world that I know who's not affected. I've never come across anybody who doesn't have themselves, their parents, their spouses, their siblings, their, their uncles, their aunts. Their, there's somebody. Can I remember once Rabbi Tversky saying many, many years ago, if anybody, when people ask, is there any depression in the family? No, not in mine. <laughs> he says, you're Jewish. You're lying. Sounds <laughs> <laughs> like Woody Allen. <laughs> yeah. He literally would say, Rabbi Tversky says, he says, you know, he remembers his uncle. It was a probably with a little bit of Prozac or whatever it was that he needed. He could have been a very happy man. He could have lived a much more functional life. He was a grouch, never smiled. And that's how they all knew him. Uncle Grouch, you know? Mm. Nobody knows what goes on in anybody's space. We have an opportunity to do something, we have to behave yesterday. I learned something on the on the Tuesday group. Um, it was really about smiling each day, but it was a thing that Rabbi Tversky brought down, that where does our wealth and everything come from? And, and a person who is a miser doesn't really see, but really what he was bringing down was a Gemara, that a man had lots of money, uh, uh, not a Gemara, there was a story from the Rebbe of Rizion. And he says that like a man had a lot of money, um, Gosh, no, I'm trying to see it in front of me, but I can't. So, so the man has money. He doesn't give his wife anything. He goes to complain to the Rebbe to say that he has a very unhappy marriage. And the Rebbe says to him that there's a Gemara in Shabbos that if you promise a lot of money and you don't fulfill your promise, your spouse, your wife will die. Okay. So he says, go and make a promise. Right. So he donates a huge amount of money and then he sends the guy away with out thing. And he comes back to the river. He says, I did what you said and my wife hasn't died. <laughs> okay. So, so he says, he says, okay, now what you must do is just be very nice to her. Okay. And buy her presents and say kind things and do and do and then come back and tell me what's going on. Comes back and he says, Oh, it's so strange. My wife's become so nice. And da da da. He says, Fantastic. Now you better quickly go and pay that thing because otherwise she's going to die. <laughs> <laughs> now, when we think about the genius of that, right? So she probably saw him as having all this money, won't spend anything on it. And he was, it was a miser. He was like, So why do I have to be nice to him? He wasn't nice to her. He didn't say it becomes like, now, as soon as we break that mold and we, we just let go of it, right? So it becomes, instead of being this, it's a flow of giving. And what does giving do? Giving creates love. But it's got to be a two-way flow of giving. And the more we can do this, it's such a genius, genius thing, right? And imagine if everybody would take that lesson and learn that lesson. Because it's tough stuff, because we don't want to give and do when the other person's not. But how do you break the, the thing? And that's what the things we learn. And everything is direct from our Torah. There's nothing that is missing. 99% of people would not divorce if they followed that Torah. Not because of keeping mikvah, but because of keeping the mitzvahs ben Adam l'chavero. By keeping the mitzvahs of ben Adam l'chavero, you would have much healthier marriages. Right? Even people haven't got anything to give physically, you give, because that's what women need. We do it. But a person can always be nice and say nice things and kind things and soft things and be, that's part of our world that we live in. And everybody needs it. And now I'm going to say, have a beautiful day.